Over the past couple of months, I've been interviewing a bunch of different professionals in their field and asking them for their advice on the three aspects of my YouTube channel, nutrition, exercise optimization, and injury. When I was interviewing them, I had such a great time and it also confirmed some of the things that I already do in terms of exercise and nutrition, but it also made me think more about the things that I could be doing better or the things that I could start doing. I think it's so important to be able to, to have this opportunity to listen to professionals who've been exactly where we are today, didn't know exactly what to do, um, don't know how to approach certain things, and learning from how they learned in their journey is something that I think we can all take something out of. So I hope this is helpful to you. The five main categories I've segregated their advice into for this video are their principles to nutrition, their game day prep, long-term nutrition planning for big tournaments, their opinions on diet, and finally, the intersection between nutrition and well-being. James Young Husband recently retired from his time as a professional footballer in the Philippines. Growing up in the UK, he started his career in Chelsea's youth football program before heading to the Philippines with his brother to play for clubs such as Loyola Sparks and Sarah's Negro FC. Ina Palacios has been playing football since primary school and although started out as a field player, is currently the goalkeeper and captain of the Philippine women's national football team, the Malditas. Both James and Ina have competed for the Philippines in the SEA Games, the AFF, and the AFC tournaments. Remini Rule and Luke Gebby are both swimmers for the Philippines and were qualified for the 2020 Olympic Games. Remedy was an NCAA Division I swimmer who grew up in the US. For the Philippines, she's competed in multiple SEA Games and the World Aquatic Championships, holding 12 national records and 5 SEA Games medals. She's also a vegetarian. Luke, Although competing in the World Aquatic Championships and the SEA Games recently and meddling, he took a five-year break from swimming during university in Melbourne and had a really unique path getting to where he is now. I think massively. Again, I'm going back to, especially as you get, it makes a big difference as you're older, but I think when you're younger, it's get an early, it helps you get an early start and can give you a massive advantage to your opponent uh, compared to your opponents. When I was younger, I would run, we would run uh, lots of cross country, like which is like lots of long distance running. Mm. And back then, I, when I was younger, I would, would drink lo lots of soda. And I'd always have lots of sti uh, a stitch, like a little pain in my, uh, under my ribs. And, um, and I was like, ah, oh, but uh, as I got older, I, I cut down on soda. I just have one soda after a game, really, because I'm craving lots of sugar. Mm. Uh, but I don't, I've never got a stitch since then. So, so this is actually really interesting. I used to get side stitches quite often, but after I stopped drinking water right before I would run, it gradually went away. But the cause of side stitches, which is actually called exercise-related transient abdominal pain, so ETAP, the cause of this is actually unknown. But places like Berkeley Wellness, BBC Health and Healthline speculate that it's the cause of blood flowing to the diaphragm or irritation and friction between um, the abdominal muscles. However, it is generally known, and you might have heard your coaches tell you before, that avoiding drinking lots of water and having a heavy meal right before your event or right before training could help to prevent this, which is also suggested by Eichner on NCBI. And the fact that James' side stitches completely disappeared after he got rid of one sugary drink, and the fact that this method might not really work for different people or might not be ideal for them shows just how personalized nutrition and sports performance can be. You have to have a balance though again, you can't eat super strict. I think what we do, you do 80-20, so 80% is good eating during the week and then 20% not so good. And then I think you can go, if you eat right before a game, after a game, that's when you can eat as much as you, well not as much as you want, but you can treat yourself with like maybe a nice burger or pizza. And then after that, go back to the, the normal routine. So it plays a big factor. I think it's, but I think this day and age, young players and and players were becoming more aware of it because science is playing a major factor now into the sport. So yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I remember I was younger, I always have like a, a pastry before a game and our coach was like, what are you doing eating a pastry before a game? Uh, but I needed the sugar rush. So I mean, uh, I think that's important. I think as well to defend it, it's, important to eat something rather than nothing. If you eat nothing, that's dangerous as well. So uh, I think it's, you just need that little sugar boost as well. So it's a major factor in waking the brain up and everything. Like, I feel good, like 
as, as, as well that yeah it's important to go into it as well it's important to be well rested get the right amount of sleep as well and have the right meals because that's that really helps your performance it does because when i do agree that when you when you get older it does play a, a much bigger role because when you're a kid um it's easier to consume and also easy to intake because you can easily burn it because your, your metabolism is they're, they're just insanely fast when you're when you're when you're young right so when you're older um you would feel it kind of like slow down I, i'm guessing that's why um james said that but i'm on i'm going there on my side you also need to know your your body type and what kind of body that you have because for me um i do have a relatively fast metabolism I was always known to be lean and thin uh-huh. so my nutrition is always a lot of protein because i i burn it a lot much quicker and if i overwork i really get super thin so say that's part of my program where i really try to bulk up or gain gain muscles and weight before i go into a camp because once i go in camp and i don't have time to eat workout anymore and eat as much and you just exert so much effort like two times the effort you know um then i lose so much weight and by the end of the tournament i i'm just like gone i'm shredded <laughs> so i have you have to re- do it all over again but how did it play i would say it played the biggest role when i was in college because in college i would train for my college team i would be in school during the day and then sometimes when we're going in tournament train with the national team at night right and then when we're closing to the tournament for the national team you kind of let go of your college team and train twice a day for for the national team but it, it's tricky so what i'm saying it's played a big role in that sense because i don't get much sleep because i still try to finish my school work I study in between and all that. And so my way of recovering really is eating everything that I could to make sure that I have the energy to 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 give out as well when I'm training, when I'm studying and when I'm doing my work and all that. Yeah, oh, yeah, when I was younger, I feel like I ate whatever and I <laughs> I feel like I could eat like a pizza, like a whole pizza before practice or something and be fine, but now I, my stomach I would like throw up in practice or something but that happened. So, I mean, I think going back to like being consistent like watch what you eat during the day, like just in a normal um I guess training period and be like, "Oh, like I had oatmeal for breakfast and then I felt great at practice." Or like maybe like, "Oh, I had this before practice and I didn't feel that great or I felt bloated." So, I think just learning what makes your body feel good and then like during those training periods and be like okay like i had some great practices when i was fueling myself like this like i should try to replicate that out of me well i mean i guess you're in high school so <laughs> hopefully you don't drink a lot <laughs> but i feel like as far as like alcohol goes um if it's near a competition i mean in college swimming we had like a dry season that we weren't um supposed to drink at all and i mean i feel like i try to do that now if there's like a competition coming up it's like okay maybe like two or three months before like i don't want to be like drinking um and then maybe if it's not even in a if you're during a training season and you do enjoy drinking um for me personally i don't love drinking that much but if i do want to drink i try to be like okay i'm only going to drink in the weekends and not like every day. Uh so I think that could be like a good thing and I think that that can go also with like desserts. Like if you have a really big sweet tooth to be like okay, you know what? I'm just going to have like one dessert a week. So it's not really a like definite no, but I think it's good for those things that I guess are just fun foods or like uh fun drinks that it's more maybe a treat of the week. It's not like a daily part of you, your nutrition to be like, "Okay, I'm done with practice. I'm going to have a giant slice of cake <laughs> or something." But I I think it's also important to be like, "You know what? I love cake. I'm going to have it on this Saturday." Um so I think just finding like a balance in that way is good. 
if that makes sense. I mean, I feel like my stomach is a little bit on the more sensitive side. So I feel like I've just learned some foods like that doesn't make me feel great. So I don't eat it. And it's more for me personally, not like nobody should eat this food because it hurts my stomach, you know? I heard about a nutritionist that was really good and I went and saw her. So it was, it's not like I'm supported in doing that. It's all out of my own pocket. This training's out of my own pocket too. Like I didn't get support in that. But I just went and saw a nutritionist, told her exactly what I was doing. She knew everything about it and I put my trust in her and she was a great nutritionist and fixed everything for me, changed my whole body so quickly. Even, you know, it's not just you know, eating to stay healthy, it was perfectly fueling up for the next day. So I would have different things to eat based on what my next day was. And I would eat different foods based on like, if I'm doing a kick set or if I'm doing a aerobic or if I'm doing short sprints or if I'm gonna do heavy weights, you know, all my food was very specifically tailored. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the nutrition accounts for another 25%. James's 80-20 principle puts into words the strategies that they all adopt in terms of nutrition. It's not about restricting yourself if you don't need to, but it's equally as important to be aware of the foods that really do have a direct impact on your performance, like alcohol or sweets close to critical events. 